And the Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone. God's blessings as we gather here for our Sunday service and uh, in our fellowship with each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. A uh, couple announcements before we begin. Uh, first of all, just uh, um, remind you about Trivia Night. It's coming up here in a couple of weeks. So uh, today, I uh, um, guess see either Heather or Danelle, either one of those ladies, or Debbie. Um, don't see me, but uh, or you can give me money, I guess. I'll take money, but uh, if you want to buy your tables today and um, get those, uh, so I know they're starting to go fast, so uh, make sure you get your money in today and, and register and sign up for that trivia night of St. Michael. Um, also, new member classes are starting today, and they're meeting in the band room, which is the room right by the kitchen. Uh, that's at, uh, after this uh, service at 10 o'clock uh, with Al Bernard, so... Uh, anyone interested in getting, going through membership or interested in membership or just interested in learning about what we teach and think about, um, you can come to this class. Or if, say you're a longtime member or you just want to know what we actually teach about membership, uh, come to this class. So see you out. And then um, voters meet next Sunday again. Um, I think I said it was today. It's actually on the 11th or the 12th. Um, so on the 12th, uh, voters meeting uh, after the late service. So important to me about building expansion and, and adding staff and just kind of we're going forward to the future of our school ministry, what things are coming up and decisions we have to make as a congregation. And then last, uh, this Wednesday, we have a special chapel service here at school as we like to take this opportunity to honor our vets uh, with the upcoming Veterans Day on November 11th. So again, if you are a vet, um, first of all, you we invite you to come uh, to the chapel service on Wednesday. And if you can let us know, or again, uh, let us know of, your, of any vets in your family that we can put. We like to have a, uh, a poster to honor uh, our vets uh, here at St. Michael and our family members. Uh, but come. If you are thinking about coming, just let us know. We like try to get a head count. We have like a little reception for everyone after the chapel service. But... And anyone can come to this, again, chapel service, uh, 820 on Wednesday. And that's all for our announcements. So uh, wish you the Lord's blessings as we gather here again. And with that, I invite you to please rise and take this opportunity to greet the people around you as we begin our service.
And we gather and we make our beginning in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. I invite you at this time to kneel or sit for our confession. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have never offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent for them, and I pray for your godless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, and your suffering to death. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called or ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise. <laughs> Lord God, you sustain those who have gone before us in faith. You showed them grace, and in their lives you have shown us examples of good works that are the fruit of faith in Christ. So sustain us in faith and grace, that we bear the fruit of faith with perseverance and joy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. The children come forward for being the land. How's everyone doing? Yeah? Doing okay? All systems go? You guys awake? Yeah? No? Okay. All right. So, today's a special day. Actually, I forgot to mention this in my announcements. You know what we're celebrating today? Good job. Yeah. You guys are on top of things, you know? Okay. Well, yeah. It's also right there. So, you're right. All right. All Saints Day. You know when All Saints Day is? It's not really on the 5th. You know what day it is? That's not on the screen. What? What day of the... What, what day? It was... It, we passed All Saints Day. No, that's Reformation Day, but you're really close. Matthew? Yeah, what day is that? November 1st, right? Yeah, November 1st is All Saints Day. It's an old, ancient tradition and a festival of the church to celebrate uh, those who have gone before us. But the thing about saints, that's why I want you to what is a saint? What makes someone a saint? What makes someone a saint? What do you think? You don't know? Anyone? Well, really, what makes someone a saint is Jesus. It's Jesus came to make all of us saints. Now, sometimes we think saints is someone who's really, really good, who did something really, really sacrificial, was really, really nice, and just, just you know, gave all their money to the church and just helped the poor and did all those things. That if someone did all those things, is that someone a saint? Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's very saintly. Yeah. That, yeah, it can be. Yeah, very saintly. But that's not what makes someone a saint. What makes someone a saint is what Jesus did. And what did Jesus do to make us saints? What did Jesus do? That's right. He went to wash away our sins. He came to take all away our sins. So even when sometimes we're not all that nice, sometimes we're not all that good, sometimes we're not really helping our neighbor as ourselves, it's not a good thing to do, but does Jesus still make us saints? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. So that's the thing I want to say to you guys. You guys are saints. You're saints because Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. Jesus took away your sins. Jesus rose again for you. That's what makes us saints. And we're going to read off a name of a bunch of people who have died this past year. And we recognize them as saints, not because of what they did. And then a lot of these people, all these people are good people, decent people. A lot of them are my friends and colleagues, and I miss them terribly. But I rejoice in the fact that they are saints because Jesus loves them so much and made them holy and washed their, all their sins away. All right, let's close with prayer. And I have a church bulletin for you, kids bulletin for you. So use it too. There's a nice picture in the back you can color of Jesus the King. Yes. It's this. Folded piece of paper with stuff in it. Anything that's folded, like tic-tac-toe, a bulletin board is a board with stuff on it. You don't fold it. All right. This really devolved into a whole different topic. Is a book a bulletin? I want you guys to go home. This is a great discussion to have with your parents at home. And you guys can figure that out and let me know next Sunday, okay? Sound good? All right, should we vote on that? Yeah. All in favor, say aye. aye. All opposed, say no. Okay, the ayes have it. All right, we'll discuss it next week. That was our first voters meeting with you kids. All right, was it exciting? All right, hold your hands, bow your heads, and close your eyes.
Gracious Father, as we gather here, first of all, we thank you for all the saints who have gone before us, who lived their lives faithfully, um, even though they weren't perfect, but we see you as a perfect God, and by your grace has loved all of us and forgiven all our sins. Help us to live our lives today as saints that we can to continue to show an example and reflection to people around us, um, what a saint is. A saint is one who's dependent on God and looks towards Jesus for our life and salvation. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Here you go. Here you go. If you have words on it, sure. Don't make paper airplanes out of these bulletins. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> well, you could do that. Just don't do it at church and throw it. That would be embarrassing for your parents. So. All right. Get one. There you go. We'll continue now as we hear from God's Word. Today's first reading is recorded for us in the book of Revelation, chapter 7, beginning in verse 9. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Be Please rise. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and other all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all 
Congregation may be seated for the hymn of the day. Maybe seated. I'm going to turn back to uh, Romans chapter 7, not Romans, but Revelation chapter 7. It's uh, page 1032 in your pew Bibles if you want to follow along because what we saw there is this vision of John that God gave to John. It's a beautiful vision of what is yet to come and what we can look forward to as we talk about heaven, we talk about paradise, we talk about the, the last days. Uh, uh, that day when Christ will return, where are we going to be taken to? And, and we just see this brief description. Of course, this does explain everything. doesn't tell us everything, what heaven's going to be like, what eternal tea is going to be like. But uh, it gives us the essence of, of what we look forward to. And, and one thing I want to tie in with this is this idea as we read this. And, and you see this, uh, this, this multitude that uh, no one can number these Billions of people, you know, every nation, from every nation, from all tribes, all peoples, all languages, this, this gathering, this uh, multi-group of, of, of races and people and, and from all walks of life, from all centuries of life, um, this didn't happen in a vacuum. In other words, my point is this, that saints, being saints, just doesn't happen accidentally, it doesn't happen on its own, but uh, 
But these saints are all part of a great, grand story, a real story, a true story, that you and I are also part of. And we gather here to be reminded of that story that you and I are part of. Uh, but again, it's a story that, uh, of this unification of all people from all places, from all languages. And, um, and they're clothed in that white robes, um, celebrating and praising, um, waving their palm branches in their ha uh, hands. Uh, verse 10, they, they're crying out with loud voice and that sound of praise of salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, this praise to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, um, you know, you skip down to verse 13, and, and, you know, when the elder is asking John, you know, who are these people? You know, and, and John didn't want to answer that question. And, uh, and in verse 13, it says, so the elders addressed me, saying, uh, who are these clothed in white robes, and from whom they come? I said to him, sir, you know. And he said to me, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. And they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the land. That, that verse right there, uh, who are these people? Who are these saints? Who's this mass, this multitude? They are the ones that come in the great tribulation. But their robes have been washed. They've been washed and made white in the blood of the Lamb. This is our story. Um, not just as Christians. But this is a story that God has given to the world. But as Christian people, we come to articulate this story. We come to tell the story. We come to know and live out the story each and every day in our lives. But this is a story we proclaim, we share, we evangelize to the world around us. That we are all part of this great tribulation. The world is a world of tribulation, of distress and hardship, of struggle of sin and temptation, of pain and suffering, hopelessness. But out of that tribulation, we, these people, and us, we fight the good fight in faith, knowing that whatever struggles we have faced, whatever temptations we have fallen to, all of us have been made white. We wear that white robe by the blood of the Lamb of Jesus. This is an ancient story that stems all the way back to the time of Adam and Eve, starting with them. And we've been living at that story every century, in every decade. We'll continue to live at that story into that time when finally when Christ returns and gathers us all together. And finally we can be in this place for all eternity with all the multitude, with all the nations, with all the people, worshiping Jesus, the Lamb who has made this all possible for us. So I want to talk about this story. What I'm talking about, and um, this is something I, I, I taught Martin, is that um, he was at, asked me a good question. If he uses someone else's sermon or a point of someone's sermon, do we have the references? He says, yeah, it's probably a good idea. So I'm going to practice that myself. I'm stealing this sermon from someone else. It's actually not a sermon. It's a book I just read. But... Um, but in this book, he's talking about that the gift that, not just Christianity, but it's really the gift of the Bible, the sacred scriptures, the Bible, has given us a story that we're part of, this cosmic, epic story that we're all living out. And, and what that story does, it, it grounds us to what our reality is, and so and so what the argument the, the author was making in this book is that when it comes to our world view and, and, and you start talking about philosophy, especially Western philosophy, that the real influence of philosophy is, is, is starting with Judaism, Israel, and, 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 and continue onward with Christianity is the big uh, movement or shakers of our Western view when it comes to this world view, this biblical world view. And it's interesting, you know, kind of a side note here, um, 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 a book just came out. I haven't read this book, so I don't want to, well, I can't quote anything from it because I haven't read it, but I, I listened to an interview of an author um, who makes this bold claim that, that really our Western thought, our Western thinking is not from the Greek and the Romans, but actually it's more ancient. 
It goes all the way to the Hebrews. That the Hebrews have more influence of Western thinking of our biblical worldview than anything else. And even stuff that we take for granted as, as Western thinkers, um, thinking that this is all part, has always been part of our, of our culture and our way of thinking. And we usually credit to the Greeks and the Romans, and, and he would make argument, no, it goes farther back, it goes to the Hebrew thinkers, it goes to the scriptures, it goes to the Torah, as the biggest influence in our, in our world. And, and what connects all this is, again, is, is that we're part of the story that the Bible has been telling for centuries. And the story starts with this, that there is a creation. There's a God of eternity who created all this, and more importantly, who created you and me, who created humanity. And what's important about understanding the creation and why we talk about the creation, again, we kind of take it for granted. Like, of course, yeah, you know, Genesis 1, 2, you know, the six days of creation, God rested on the seventh day, he created Adam and Eve, and he created Adam and Eve to be in whose image? God. Creating the image of God. What does that mean? It means that every single human person, and we know this. The reason why we know this is because being created in the image of God means that every single one of us is unique and worthy and divine. Not that you're gods. You're not gods. I'm not saying that. But divine in the sense that, that you are precious. Humanity is precious. We're sacred because we're of God, and we belong to God. We're truly his children. And you see glimpses of that in, in our culture uh, throughout time uh, of, of the, the preciousness of humanity, the sacredness of human life, why we talk about like that way. We're not just mere creatures. We're not like the deers, although they're cute. They're all around my house. And we're not like rabbits. We're not definitely not like cats. <laughs> we're better than that. We're creatures created in the image of God in which God himself came and breathed the essence, his essence, his spirit into us. And whether you are brought into this world, whether you acknowledge God or not, doesn't change that fact. You're so precious. Being human is a precious thing. But the other part of the story, as we continue on that story, is the tragic part of the story is that humanity rebelled against God. And every generation born from Adam and Eve in their rebellion and their disobedience of God, we fall into that same sin. sin. Even though we inherit that sin of Adam and Eve, but we ourselves are all equally guilty of contributing to that rebellion. And that's why the world we live in today is the way it is. Why there is violence and hatred, injustice, oppression, Unfair things, brokenness, sickness, disease. But it also kind of describes why humanity is so invested to solve these problems. Because we can recognize these as problems, that this isn't right. It's not right for someone to get sick. We need to figure a way to heal them and fix that. It's not right someone is being oppressed. We need to fight against that and speak against it. Because what the fall of humanity shows us is that sin is real. Evil is real. And it should never be tolerated. It should never be celebrated. Although at the same time, this is the, the great irony of humanity is that why we speak for truth and justice and righteousness how often we fall into that very muck and that dirt and that sin and that darkness over and over again. 
this story continues into a more radical, not radical, but a powerful way uh, of, of, of the story of Israel. You know, starting with Noah, going on to Abraham and the patriarchs and, and the children of, 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 um, of Jacob and, and um, the story of Joseph and uh, the 12 tribes of Israel and the whole exodus, the wandering, the conquest and the promised land, all this this story, this history that we see recorded in Scripture is an illustration of the struggle of humanity and, and our struggle to honor and to follow God, but also it illustrates the power of God's grace and God's desire to restore His people. And even though the story of Israel is a, is a particular story in a particular time, for a particular people, but that story is expanded upon the whole world of what we struggle with. Our desire to really want to want to know God, but our struggle to reject God. But also the story of God's grace to rescue us. Because that's the real apex of the story. Is the redemption of, of humanity to one particular person, Jesus Christ. And that grand scheme event of God coming into this world, into the flesh, and to go to the cross as a perfect person, and to bear our sins on himself so that he can make us clean and to restore us back to himself. And they conclude that story, is that, is that new creation, that, and, and we're kind of in that conclusion right now, that we're part of that new creation, that we have been baptized in the name of Jesus, and we follow him. But then we read from Re uh, Revelation 7, we look forward to that new heaven and that new earth we look forward to that time of heaven, a time of paradise where finally we can depart from this broken world and finally go into the world, go back to the Garden of Eden, into the place of paradise, and to live the life that God has desired for all of us from the beginning of time. This is an epic story. And this is a story we live each and every day. And it's a story we've, we've been sharing to the world through the centuries. It's why we think the way we think, but, but the problem is, too often times throughout history, we forget the story. And I think that's what we see a lot today, what's going on in the world today, especially in our own context, in our own culture here in, in, in North America. Now, it's interesting, it's kind of an interesting point, again, referencing this book, and I forgot the author's name, I should reference his name, but I even forgot the name of the book. It's about, uh, it's, uh, it's about, anyway, I'm not going to try to say it. It's a long title. Anyway, the point of the book is this, this, um, this movement that, that the author is observing, he's interviewed a lot of people of, of atheists and secularists um, starting to rediscover God again, and, 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 and cold-hearted, that's a negative word, but hard-set atheists starting to realize that God and religion explains a lot of things, and some of these atheists, some of these secularists becoming Christian um, for the first time. And in the book, he makes this reference that, that when we forget the story, when we forget where we come from who that we belong to, what we have struggled with, how we have been redeemed by Jesus, then also we just start to make our own little stories. That if we don't have a foundation that's bounded on, on Christ and his word, and we don't have that foundation like the hymn we sing on sink and sand that we stand, and we just begin to make our own stories and nothing makes sense. That's why virtues become vices and vices become virtues. 
That's why everyone kind of follows their own thing and does their own things. That's why you go on social media, no one can agree with each other. Everyone is arguing with each other. It also explains why so many people, I think, are struggling mentally of the increase of anxiety, increase of depression. Now, don't get me wrong. Christians struggle with anxiety. Christians struggle with depression. You can be in the story and still struggle with those things. But as Christians, you have this firm hope because you have a foundation. Can you imagine not having that foundation? An increase of depression, suicide. Loneliness, anxiety, starts to make sense because you don't know who you come from. If we just simply teach people, if you're just an accident of the cosmos, that there is no God, there is no future, there is no hope. You just live the best life you can live that you know how. There is no morals, there is no right, there is no wrong. How chaotic that has to be. But as we gather here on the Saints Day, being created as saints, as children of God, we have a foundation that's solely based on Jesus. And the other day, it's about Him. That's our story the story of Jesus. The story of God coming to his creation. The story about God who loved you so much, even though we ran away from him, even though we have rebelled from him, even though even today we still struggle to follow his righteousness. He loved you so much, he came to us to die for us. So when we are anxious, when we are frustrated, when we are scared, Remember the story that you're part of. That you live in Jesus, and Jesus lives in you. You are precious, and though you have struggled and sinned, you are forgiven. You're loved by God for all eternity. And one day, this will pass, and we look forward to that awesome day. Finally, we can shed off the sinfulness and be clothed with the righteousness of Christ. And for all nations, from all tribes, from all centuries, from all time, we gather together to celebrate and praise the name of Jesus, the Lamb who's in the center, the Lamb whose blood we have been made clean. That's our story. That's our tr truth. That's our reality. And we proclaim that, share that to the world around us. Amen. Please rise. ahead be seated and we'll continue in our worship as part of our worship to gather offerings and take this opportunity to present our gifts and our tithes to our Lord.
please rise. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the skills and abilities that allow us to earn a living, to feed ourselves and our family. Please accept our thanks and our appreciation for calling us into this family of faith, that through this congregation we also may witness to our various communities the good news of your gospel. As we pray in Jesus' name, amen. We will continue now as we offer the prayers of the church and as part of our prayers, we'll take this opportunity uh, as we celebrate All Saints Day to remember um, our beloved ones, uh, members of our church and uh, family members uh, that, uh, who have passed away this past year. And remember with, um, with the hope um, and with the comfort uh, that they belong to Jesus, um, that Jesus uh, died for them uh, and has risen back to life for them. And as that vision we just read about in Revelation, that uh, we look forward to that grand day when we finally will be reunited with our beloved ones um, in heaven for all eternity. So please join me in our prayers. As we gather here as sons and daughters, we pray that the church, called from death to life by our Lord Jesus, will follow in the footsteps of the saints who by God's grace who are agents of Christ's life-giving service in the world, and for pastors and church workers and for all people of the church, that they will proclaim and demonstrate the gospel of our salvation with boldness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. we want to pray for the leaders of the world and of this nation, for all voters and for those elected, that they will respect the truth of God given dignity of every man, woman, and child, and for who serve in the armed forces, and for the victims of violence and war, and for our enemies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those in any kind of need, those whom we have named and in whom we have named silently before you. Bring praise to the dying and the comfort, and the comfort to the bereaved. Father, today we want to pray uh, for Stan as he is recovering from surgery, as well as for Dan Smith as he um, is re returned home and that you continue to bring, grant him healing. Father, uh, be with David Wacker and we thank for his uh, surgery went well as he is recovering uh, from his recent heart surgery. Father, be with Paula Morrison who just suffered a stroke that you bring healing to her. For Monica uh, who starts chemo for her breast cancer that you watch over her and grant healing to her. Father, be with um, Eldon Wigmeyer as he is recovered from a recent surgery on his gold, gold bladder. Be with Caroline McCaffrey as she recovers from back surgery due to a recent fall. Also, Father, we want to pray for Eddie Jones and for Chuck as they both enter hospice care. Um, give them the reassurance and the hope that we all share in the resurrection of Jesus, knowing that as we face the end of our life, we have the hope of eternal life in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And Father, with remembrance of those who have died in the communion of a church, we name before you in that joyful expectation of the resurrection to life eternal. Greg Andrews. Judy Atkinson. Steve Atkinson, William Ayers, Donna Bukovich. Judy F. Dan Francisco.
Lewis Lux. Gerald Lee. Grayson Lee. John Herman. Karen Jones. John Kurtz. Rita Laird. William Lignan. Gary Martin. John McMenemy. Jennifer Pape. Karen Vitello. Christopher Powell. Cheryl Provost. Sue Smith. Esther Weber. Vern Whitbeck. Alice Wisner. James Wright. With thanks and praise, along with heavy hearts, we remember these loved ones. Having hope in Christ, we wait the day we shall sing our praise and be reunited with the faithful gathered before the throne of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear us when we call upon you, most merciful Father, and grant us grace to entrust our lives and our world to your unfailing love. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, the Lord be with you. And with my spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. And let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and solitary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who ascended above the heavens and sitting at your right hand, 
poured out on this day the promised Holy Spirit on his chosen disciples. For all this, the whole earth rejoices with exceeding joy. Therefore, with angels and archangels of all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Join me as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he gave it thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given to you. This do in remembrance of me. Saying, We also took the cup after supper, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you the forgiveness of all your sins. This do is out because you drink it in remembrance of me. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always.
please rise. Thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And bless we the Lord. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon your favor and give you his peace. Amen.